Um, this is um, the fifth video to um, in discussing uh, project 18.1 and um, the, in the last video fall we um, reached the final uh, class that we need to implement with our, which is our chart frame and we um, went back to um, lay out the design of the different components and panels please uh, view the uh, video fall to um, to kind of catch up on uh, where we are on this. Um, just a quick reminder, uh, we're going to create two, uh, we're gonna use the frame and use the border layout. We're gonna create a panel called user input panel uh, that will have the text fields and labels for entering the different data items and the add button, which will uh, be the trigger to get everything going, will add the uh, panel and will repaint the output panel. So two panels, one north, one center. Input panel has the different components and is going to use the floor layout. And the output panel, which will have a grid layout that has two columns. On the first one, the bar uh, component, and the second one, the pi uh, component. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started. So our chart frame. Uh, will have uh, several uh, class variables. Um, the panels need to be uh, class variables and the uh, data collection need to be a class variable. So create a data collection and uh, you can call it um, anything. I'm going to call it chart. And um, we need to create two panels. So G panel and we will call the input panel and another j panel that we're going to call the output panel all right then uh, we can encapsulate these two although we're not going to use the set and get methods here uh, so we don't really need to do that um, just for practice purposes, you can go ahead and, and create them, but we're not really going to need them. So we'll just make these private. And we should have a constructor, public chart frame. And in the constructor, we can do stuff like setting the title. So we can say set title. And uh, we'll say that this is um, uh, project 18.1 or whatever title you want. Want to create the chart, so the chart's new data collection. And we want to create the panel, so input panel equal new uh, input pan new J panel. and the uh, output panel well actually we can create a method use method create input panel and the output panel the same create output panel and that's all uh, what we need to do so then we go and implement these two new methods. So we'll uh, implement the create input panel, which creates the uh, user uh, ability to enter the data. So public void create input panel and some people may say that why do we need to do this to have this method as public? You can go back to chapters 10, 11, I believe, to discuss the, the accessibility of the method. Create input panel is a method that will be used only from uh, this uh, constructor. It's not going to be used from outside the constructor. So you can actually make this private, which means no other class can 
I created and I forgot and made this uh, void where it should be J panel as it returns uh, a J panel. So we can uh, create a J panel input uh, equal new J panel and put on the end the here say return input. And um, likewise for the uh, create output panel, uh, creates the output panel. So private G panel create output panel. And I'm just creating the structure of these methods to get rid of all the compiler complaints and then get back and finish it up. I forgot here on the frame two things we want to do on the frame. We want to add those panels to the frame. So I will say add uh, input panel and the input panel will go to uh, border layout north and the add the output panel and you can say border layout center or if you don't say anything it is added to the center that's the default when you add so now you created the two panels added them to the frame so going to the input panel the input panel will have is a flow layout so you create the components and add them in the order that you want them so let's say we want the user to enter the title followed by the length followed by um, the uh, the choice of color so we can say uh, create the uh, title which will need a label and a text field so j label uh, label title equal new j label and we'll say uh, title then we need a text field and we'll call this uh, text field title equal new j text field and we can say the title will be maybe 20 the size so add import and add import so you created both of them uh, we can add them to the panel so we can say input dot add and I can add the label title first and then add the text field add it to the panel then we go for the length which will be the same j label label length equal new j label and we'll say length and uh, j text field text length equal new j text field and then we'll say uh, for the length maybe this can be only five and then add to the panel so we'll say input dot add there are by the way other properties so if you feel free to go to the ABI and in educate yourself about the different properties that are available and uh, try them out uh, try to add uh, for instance a tooltip uh, if you want try to add uh, different colors fonts any, anything that, uh, like that then finally the uh, selection of the color uh, create a selection of color 
and um, we can use a G combo box for that. Um, so we can um, just use a G combo box. And then we can call it combo box uh, color equal new G combo box. And then we need to add the items. So this is setting the properties here. And uh, here are the items. So you want to add an item, uh, and the first item will add um, will be similar to the colors. I think we selected black, so we can say black, and then add another item, and blue. And I believe we also selected um, uh, green. And then add to the panel and say input dot add and add the combo color. So the last item is the button. Create the add button. So we say J button add button equal new or the uh, Follow the same uh, naming convention, button add equal new G button add. So with the button, we need to create a listener, create uh, a listener. And in this case, you can choose to create a listener as a separate class, as a, a named inner class, or as anonymous inner class. So we need to, before we create a listener, we need to define it. Define and create a listener to respond to the click, the user click. So first to create the listener, define the listener, define the listener by creating a class and we're going to call this class uh, add listener and every component like the button, the combo and so on has uh, a different type of event it responds to. The button responds to action event. And if you want to be a listener to action event, uh, you need to implement action listener. And if you're not familiar with what is a listener, what is events, please read the event-driven uh, handling mechanism in end of chapter 9 or see my previous videos on that. So implements action listener. When a class implements something, this means that that something is an interface. Go back to chapter 9 uh, to read about it. And the action listener has one method, so you have to implement that method. A method, uh, public void action perform action event and give it any name. This is the method that acts like the main method the it is it gets called automatically once the user uh, call on the um, the class. I mistyped. Action. Oh. Still mistype. Notice here that um, spelling is important. The method has to be named exactly the same way it is defined in the action list. 
So what you put here is, as I said, defining the listener. Define what you want to happen when the user hits the button. When the user hit that button, what, what do you want to happen? Multiple things, actually. The first one is we want to read the what the user entered in the different text fields. So each text field that we have here, this thing is uh, acting up. So for each text field, we want to read the data from that text field, and all the text field reads the strings. So we'll say string title equal and text title dot get text. So the method is called get text, which gives us the text that the text field has at the time of the click of the button. Then you need the string length, which again text field title or text field length dot get text and string uh, color equal text field color or not text field color combo box color dot get selected item. get selected item and you need to cast that to a string now there is some concerns here from the compiler and the reason is uh, those variables we define them lo as local variables and we are uh, using them inside an inner class and the rule is if you use a local variable inside an inner class, it's okay, but you have to make sure that this variable is going to be the same reference. It's not going to uh, take on another reference. And you ensure that by adding a final uh, attribute to uh, that local variable. If you define them as a class variable, which what the book does, uh, then you don't have to worry about it. Uh, it, it, it works uh, fine. Now, with respect to the length, I need the length to be an integer, so I need to uh, get an integer for the length uh, from that, and I can uh, get the integer by wrapping the length around uh, the string around an integer class, so I can say integer dot, and the method, I believe, is the value of which receives the string and give us back an integer. So the value of that receives uh, the text. So if I say here, give me the value of the text that exists in the length text field and give me that as an integer and I point it in the integer. So now the user hit the add. I grabbed all what the user have selected. I need to put that in a data element method so in the data element class object, so I'll say data element, and maybe I can call it element equal new data element. And I remember we had a constructor that initialize those three and color. And I need to import the package. So now I got the data element. The next step is to add that element to the collection. So maybe I need to write some comments here uh, to get the values from the text fields. Wrap the values in a data element object. Then um, the last one is to add the object to the collection. So we named it a collection chart. This is our collection. So, and if you recall from previous video, we defined a method called add. So we say chart.add. 
and add the element to the chart. And then finally, we want to repaint the panel. So I'll say the output panel dot repaint. Okay. And that's what we want to happen when the user hit the add button. And that's all what's in the uh, panel. So this was defining the listener by creating an inner class. The next step is to create the listener object by the creating an object of this class that we just defined. Call it listener new add listener. And then add the listener object to the button. Or in other words, register the that object with the button by saying button add dot add action listener. Add action listener listener. And then add the button to the pen. So I say input dot add button add. Okay. So this completes our uh, the create input panel and um, I see the time uh, now so I'm gonna stop here and in the next video uh, create the output panel.